Audio recording for this meeting has begun. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Wilmer, and today we're going to be looking at the Prepare Forms tool in Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. Today is part one. We're just going to be looking at the basics of adding fields to a form that does not require any signatures. So let's get right into it. Now, when you start up the tool, you're encountered with this screen. So you have two options, select a file or scan a document. Scan a document that just integrates into the Enhanced Scans tool. And But we're just going to go with select a file for today. And I have a particular file in mind. Now, today we're just going to be covering the basics of adding a field to a form that does not require signatures. So I'm going to leave this unchecked. And But notice down here it says form field auto detection is on. This I will leave on. And we're just going to click start. And we're going to give Acrobat a second while it converts that over. Beautiful. So here's our form. And in Microsoft Word, this is just a sample document that we like to use for the Prepare Forms tool. In Microsoft Word, these are, these are just some tables right here. So we have some labels on the left-hand side and some open cells like this. Now, Acrobat, when, you, when, it, says, when it says that the form field auto detection is on, Basically, Acrobat looks through your document and it sees where would you most likely like to add in a form field. And in this case, you know, labels on the left-hand side, these big open cells on the right side. Acrobat is smart enough to figure out that you probably want a field there. Additionally, at the bottom, you have like these little squares next to these labels. And so Acrobat is smart enough to put some checkboxes down there. However, it needs some help. It needs some help from, from a human in order to figure out what to do for these questions, one, two, three, and four. And so that's what we're going to do. So at the very top, we can see we have a lot of tech fields available to choose from, starting with a text field. And a text field is just effectively the same thing as what we've already automatically generated up here. Text field, you can just type in any kind of text that you want. And it's ideal for number two in this case, so an open-ended kind of question. So. You can double click to get into the properties. A useful option for text fields is to add in a hard character limit like this. Moving on, the next option is a checkbox, which is useful for numbers three and four. So you know, you just put it right next to this yes. So for a yes or no question, you would just check the box yes, leave it blank for no. Pretty simple. Additionally, we can also do radio buttons. Now, radio buttons, for those who don't know, they're uh, mutually exclusive options. So you press one, and then the other becomes deactivated. Now, note that to make sure that these buttons are mutually exclusive, you'd have to click this here, add another button. So we're just going to do this. And we're going to edit the form real quick, just to make it clear that there, the second option is a no option. Cool. Now back in prepare forms. So that was our radio buttons done. Now up next we have a list box. So just a list of choices, pretty self-explanatory. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I prefer its cousin, the drop-down menu. They're essentially the same, but the drop-down takes up less space. So something I'd like to use the drop-down for is this question up here, number one, where we have a selection of predetermined options to choose from. So you, you would just double click, go into the properties, go into options, and just add your items like this. And in our case, it would be less than one, one, two, three, and four plus. And so we just, I just clicked preview, and we can then go and see what our form would look like. It looks good. Hop back into edit. And up next, we have a button. So we can add a button to the form, double click. We can add an action to it. So in our case, we could make it reset the entire form. So we could add that. And it's, this is just you know checking to make sure that we want to reset all of our fields. So we do. Uh, lastly, we can add an image. So you double click, or rather the user would double click the recipient, and then they could browse for an image. We can add in the date, and so they could add in the date like this. So there's like this little calendar view that pops up. 
uh, digital signature. So this is actually going to be covered in the video on certificates because that's what covers all those signatures. And lastly for today, the barcode. So as you can see, barcode field encodes data that end users type into a field form. Use of this field requires processing, da 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 da. In order to estimate the size of the barcode, all fields should be filled in with sample data. And so basically it takes all the data and puts it, that's in your form, in which case there's not much since there's nothing, and it puts it into a barcode. But yeah, that's it for the first part of the prepare forms tool. There's quite a bit to cover. Next time we're gonna be covering all these tools on the right hand side, as well as the distribute and tracking functionality. Until then, my name is David Wilmer and Take care, everybody.